Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm Dr. Janet McMorty, and I am your host, as well as a medical doctor, also pursuing a career in acting. This is the final episode in our Love Lost and What I Wore Celebration Week. I hope you've enjoyed all the other episodes celebrating the incredible women that I had the privilege of sharing a stage with in Mariposa Arts Theater production of Love Lost and What I Wore, which was the first time I stepped on stage since I was in high school. So it was a memorable one and oh, what a production it was. It was great. This last episode celebrates the incredible Stephanie Anderson, Stephanie Wilson. She got married. Stephanie is a first act actor. She went to theater school. She is a choreographer, voice actor, triple threat, singer, dancer, actor. She's also an improv performer. She and I performed together with the old dance hall players and We talk about this in the episode. We had a moment in the play, Love, Lost, and What I Wore, that I will never forget. I completely blanked on my lines in one of the um, shows, which had never happened to me before. I thought I was having a stroke. (laughs) And the look that she gave me, she was almost about to save me, right? Almost about to save me when I, ding, remembered my lines. But the look she gave me, just this like look in her eyes of just utmost like, you got this. I will never forget forget. And that was a pretty pivotal time for me in my acting career. uh, Because, you know, I've, I think I have trust issues, right? We talk about trust a lot in this episode. And that really made me realize how important it is to trust, you know, humans in general, but also, especially the people on stage with trust that they got you, they got your back. And uh, girl, Stephanie, I love you. Uh, I got your back. You got mine. I'm so excited to be performing with you at Improv this summer. I hope you all enjoy her incredible story. Tell me your story. Oh How gosh. did you get into the <laughs> acting biz? Um, wow, that's a loaded first question. Uh, okay, well, so my family's always been involved in the arts. My mom is a dance teacher. So growing up, growing up I was uh, in dance right from the get-go. And then around 12, I wanted to start singing lessons. So that's when I started that. And then after that, I started doing like summer camps, like musical summer camps. And my mom would usually do the choreo and um, there'd be someone doing, you know, the music, someone doing the directing. And that's kind of how I got into acting. And then I really loved like music theater. So in dance, there's a category called musical theater where you lip sync to a musical theater song. So we always had to do like our research and if it was like an Anna Green Gables song, okay, I would have to go back and look at the characters and see where they're coming from. And we'd costume it in, in like period. And then we'd, you know, learn the song and practice lip syncing. But we were kids. So now there's also a category called song and dance where you live sing, which is like legit musical theater. Uh, so I always loved that too. And then uh, in high school, I went to uh, Unionville and I auditioned for the acting program and that's where I got in. So that's really the first time that I started taking it quite seriously. Um, And I knew that I had singing and dance outside of school. So I picked the drama program and uh, loved like every second of it. And so I learned a lot of like my base foundations there. And then I went to um, the Randolph Academy for college and continued my journey with musical theater and acting. Was there ever... Okay, so a lot of people that I chat with, right, they're the second act actors, right? They've had a career prior to pursuing a career in acting or drama, theater, whatever, the more creative. Um, A lot of them were told growing up by someone, parents, guardians, teachers, whoever. There was always like a fire inside of creativity, but they were told that's not a logical, smart, sensible career path. Were you ever told that growing up? No. And what made you kind of say, screw you? (laughs) 
Um, no, I was really lucky. I my parents always supported me, and um, I know I'm like a minority in that regard. Uh, I also knew that this is what I wanted to do out of high school. Like I did not. I went straight to um, performing art. Performing arts. Wow, words. I went straight to performing arts. Um, I didn't have a like career before that. Like this is my life. This is what I do. This is in my blood. And <clears throat> my mom uh, has always been like. I call her Mama Rose, like from Gypsy, like she's like stage mom um, in the best way. Like she's always been so supportive of me, of my friends. My friends all call her their mom because they, again, a lot of my friends didn't have parents that supported them right away or, you know, they moved to Toronto from all over uh, to go to school and they didn't have like family there. So my mom kind of like took them all under her wing. And uh, yeah, I, my dad uh, was like supported me and like paid for my dance, my singing and like all of that. But it was, uh, my grade 12 musical we did Les Mis. And it was really cool because we were an art school. We had people in the arts program for, um, like music, vocal, visual art, drama, dance. So all of that combined, the school actually played the entire show like the the arts york kids played the show and it was incredible and um i got to play eponine and i'll never forget that my dad came out afterwards and he was crying and he said i now understand why you do what you do like you're very good at it keep doing it Ugh. and uh i'll never forget that moment um so, you know, he always supported, but he supported quietly. And then when he, like, saw my mm. passion and drive when I was, you know, a young adult and could be like, oh, I get it. And the, and something as moving as Les Mis, like, he blasted that music for the next three months. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really lucky. I never had to say screw you because I always had the support. Tell me about theater school. What's that like? It's crazy. It's, um, <laughs> you, <laughs> you are up, you are like in ballet class at, you know, you are up in, in your tights and leotard by like 7.30 in the morning. Um, you know, you've got dance classes in the morning right off the top, and then you go into all kinds of things. So it's, Randolph is, was, when I went there, anyway, it was split into six terms. Each term focused on something different. Um, so throughout, you did all, you had individual vocal coaches and musical theater performance classes. And then you had like voice and text classes and um, your Shakespeare classes and music theory classes, theater history classes. So you had written things as well as a ton of physical work and vocal work and just learning how your body uh works as a whole to perform so you know living down in Toronto was very exciting it was like the first time I had been out on my own and I remember like getting up and getting my tights on and walking to school and going to class right away and being so tired all the time uh, and we just go hard from morning to you know I don't know when it ended maybe like four o'clock and then you'd probably have a rehearsal after school for something. And then I was lame and just went home and did my homework and went to bed. Most of the time, I could not fathom like a nightlife because I was so emotionally and physically exhausted going through theater school. But it was the best experience. Like I loved it. I wish that I could go back knowing all that I do now and like take way more advantage of it. Um, but... Yeah, it, I mean, it was very exciting. I made some of my best friends from life there. And uh, I just feel very lucky. I worked with a ton of industry professionals. And um, yeah, they were very kind because everybody, you know, you all at that age are kind of like doubting yourself. And you see these people in your class that are so amazing. You're like, wow, I don't know how to act compared to that. 
and they just help like focus on you and sculpt you and help find your niche and um, all that kind of stuff. So, can you elaborate a bit more on <clears throat> wishing you could go back, knowing what you know now? Like, what do you know now that you didn't know then? I just, you know, it's a funny journey because you get out of school. And you go into these auditions and they teach you how to audition, how to slate, how to introduce yourself. And you get into these auditions and you psych yourself out. And it takes a while. Like, it took me a while to get to the spot where I accepted when I knew that I was giving the best I could and doing, being my best self in an audition and trying not to get hung up on the fact that the odds are low. Right. Like there's so many people that come out and at first it was really hard. Like it's crushing. You get rejected all the time. And then as soon as I started accepting the fact that I'm like, you know what, this is good. This is I'm going to do this song because it suits this character and I'm going to go in and I'm going to think to myself, I'm going to book it. And it was usually those auditions when I had like the most confidence uh, in myself and my ability that went well and that were successful. Um So it's this crazy journey and I feel like getting, getting through that and then now like being able to, on the flip side, you know, teach kids drama and dance and choreo and, and use everything I've learned and project it onto them and project my passion onto them and teach them with the skill set that I have from all of my schooling and life experience it's like, wow, I just, I'm so much more set in who I am. And if I went back to school, I would, A, appreciate, like, the slog better. Like, the long, long nights of writing, like, 30-page papers and all that kind of stuff. And really, like, diving into the different areas of theater and never, like, taking a class for granted I don't know there are days where you're like oh I just don't want to be here like I don't want to go to school today I'm so tired like you know um but just getting that training every day was so good and it's also you know school's expensive but doing workshops and doing classes now as an adult is also very challenging a to find the time b to find the money c to find the right like fit for you and you just got like a slew of everything at school And going back and, like, being able to attack my monologues and attack my songs and, like, not be afraid to belt or not be afraid to, you know, make a wrong choice and just, I don't know, I just would, I really loved my schooling. Um, So I, I think I would gain, like, a whole different view going back now. Does that make sense? The confidence you have... Yeah, it totally does. Like the the what I'm wondering about is the confidence you have now. Um, where did that come from? Did it come from just life experience after graduating? Time? Like, where where did that confidence build from since you graduated? Well, I still don't like think of myself as a su- <laughs> to backtrack as a super confident person. Like, there's a lot of times like that I doubt myself. You saw that in rehearsal process. <laughs> Um, but, uh, <laughs> don't we all, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, I know what I'm good at and I know the things that I'm not ever going to book, even though I may want to, like, I'm never going to play a little petite ingenue soprano. Like, that's just not me. And before I was like, I had a hard time accepting that because everybody wants to be the ingenue, but I'm the second banana, and now, like, I accept that, and I'm good at that. (laughs) Um, And so, I don't know. Yeah, it comes from experience. It comes from, like, realizing and seeing those times where I was like, let's be my best self, and let's just do this, and let's do this true to you, and then booking that. Like, that gives you a Mm. lot of confidence, and, and you get that call, and you're like, oh, like, that's so exciting, and... Um, wow, yeah, like I felt really good about that. And sometimes now, like I don't even, I just go, I go and I do it. And I, my goal is to feel good about what I did. And then I just kind of leave it. And when I get the call, then it's very exciting. But if I don't get the call, I'm not like crying in my bedroom, you know, 
There's a there's a few. Like when there's a show you really connect to and you really thought you were going to get, you go through rounds and rounds of auditions and that kind of thing, and then you don't get it. Like that, those are heartbreaking, but you move on mm -hmm. and uh, you you find something else. So it comes from a mix of things, I think, like life experience for sure, and um, auditioning and and being true to you, and and then you know booking the part. The the proof is in the pudding, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So what did life look like for you like since you graduated from theater school up until now? Like, what are you up to? What have you been doing? Um, it was good. I was lucky enough. Um, my agency booked me off of my second, uh, like, fifth term we do a play, sixth term we do a musical. They came and saw, we invite agencies, we teach, we, they teach us how to like put together a resume package and everything like that. So we invited agencies and they came and I actually got booked off of my fifth term show. So I couldn't do like auditioning right away because I was still in school. So I did a couple like voiceover auditions and things like that. But then I was really lucky because I had my agents right behind my back and, and they were, they were pushing for me and I worked uh, right out of school doing um, my first professional show was Angelina Ballerina. <laughs> and I was a tap dancing mouse. And uh, <laughs> in a mouse unitard with clothing attached, it was something. Um, but it was really fun. And, and you know, kids theater is, is a whole joy and ballpark of its own. It's so different from, you know, what we did, for example. Uh, and then, yeah, I just, I've been lucky to pretty, to work pretty consistently. Um, I've worked really hard to do that. And, uh, it's also, you know, I've made a lot of good connections and networking and all of that. And then, uh, what year was it? Um, probably around 20, I want to say maybe 2015 was when I got asked, uh, I work at St. Andrew's College in Aurora, and I got asked to choreograph, like, my first show on my own. And we were doing Oliver. And uh, it was really fun, and I loved it. Like, I always choreographed for myself. I choreographed, like, for dance numbers. That's, like, competitive dance is how I grew up, so that's kind of how I would choreograph. And then getting to, like, look at the show... And picture in your head, like, okay, how do 50 people look in a formation here? And how can I move them around on a three-quarter thrust stage? And how can I make this visually appealing for everyone and in the style of the show? And I loved it. Like, that would overwhelm some people, but I loved it. Uh, so that was the first one I did. And now I'm their resident choreographer there. And so I choreograph all their main stage shows. And then I also uh, work in their focus festival later in the year. And I work at another private school in Richmond Hill as well doing choreo. And I come in and do like dance workshops and stuff like that. So now it's really nice because I've kind of dipped my toes in both the um, performing side and the, the other side of the table, like, you know, choreo, directing, all that. And uh, it's really great because it gives me an opportunity to continually work when there's, you know, because it's hard to book performance gigs one after the other. Um, there's usually a lull and self-employed is always fun for many things. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I... That's kind of where I'm at now, where I've... And now I'm dabbling in voice work, too, which is really, really great. And I do from my own homemade closet, hand grommeted, <laughs> moving blankets. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and one of my cartoons is out now, and um, I'm working on a second one, and that's just really fun, and doing, like, commercial voiceovers, and I've been doing a lot of that auditioning lately, with COVID, I didn't really want to go into a lot of in-person auditions. And now I'm up in Aurelia, too. So, um, yeah, I've been focusing more on voiceover stuff. And it's so fun. And you get to record remotely from your closet in your pajamas. 
and just have a blast. And I love that. So it's kind of evolved like from performing. And I still love to perform. Like I love it. But I know that realistically, I'm not going to do that forever, which is why I also dipped my toes in, in the choreo and in the directing and now in the voice work. And um, if I could do it all, all the time, I would. Like I, I, I truly love it. Um, but I am open to gaining whatever experience as long as it's within like the industry that that really brings me joy. Mm-hmm. For the choreography piece, was that I know you said kind of you always had that those like kind of visions in your mind of how like dance numbers would work. Did you have any f- training in that or did that come? Is that genetic just because your mom? <laughs> <laughs> she would love that question. Um, I didn't have training in how to choreograph. I, I, but I grew up like I was a studio rat. I grew up in the dance studio from, mm-hmm. you know, age three and a half to 16, 17. So for me, it was like when kids need an outlet and they maybe read a book or write in a journal or go for a bike ride I went down to our basement and my mom has a small little studio in the basement and I'd put on music and I'd choreograph for myself and that just like to express how I felt to it was always private um but I just loved to do that um to tell a story like lyrical contemporary was always my favorite style because you your job is to tell the story so it's a mix of like acting and dance and um so that was always a thing for me. I always loved to do it, but I had never dabbled in doing it with big groups. Like the most I had done was like maybe a duet uh, for a comp season, like for dance, but I hadn't done like a full blown production. And now like I just play the music and like, I know the next show I'm doing. Okay. I start playing the music and I just start envisioning it um, with the stage space that I have and, I'll listen to the song a whole bunch of times and and just kind of let it come to me. And then I write it out with my awful stick figure drawings and X's of where people are supposed to go and how they're supposed to move. And no one probably understands it but me. Um, But I it's a passion for sure. Yeah. Natural instinct. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yes, it's genetic. It's It's genetic. genetic. It's interesting because I was having with. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I was thinking about, I have like, I I have no choreography training. I did some dance growing up, but I I definitely have that in my mind. Like if I hear a song, especially a song from a musical, I tend to choreograph something in my brain, whether it's like a figure skating routine. I've never been a figure skater. <laughs> uh, musical theater number. I've done one musical in my lifetime. I don't know where this comes from. But yeah, it's interesting. I think there's something about having... I think there's a type of like brain that does that. Yeah. And you well, know, you just, naturally... that's what I think of when I hear music. Yeah, and you naturally want to move, right? Like when, for example, before yeah. the show that we did together, um, when they put on a song just for us to move around to, it's like you naturally have a rhythm. You in particular, you know, like, but you can see it. Like, you're naturally doing things that go to yeah. the music. So it comes, it does come naturally, mm-hmm. I guess, to some people, especially if you have had dance training because you know how to, how to count in eight and how to, you know, put a sequence of steps together. But, uh, you mm-hmm. know, my mom always says to me, she's like, I don't know how you choreograph for that many people. Like she, she does, she's the biggest group she's done, I think is around maybe 20, which is fair and big, but like sometimes the cast is like 50 people and it's crazy like 50 people on stage is nuts and trying to get and then 50 people of different abilities right so then I really have to think and I have Mm to um the boys at the school for example I need to make it athletic because that's what they key into that's what they know so that's how they relate to the choreo I can't be like and kickball change pirouette you know um they, I'm like, okay, so you're going to do this, like, you know, in football when – I know nothing about football. When you do this, it's like, yeah, do this. Okay, so good. Let's do this jump and, you know, uh, but trying to, like, match all different ages and all different abilities. Um, I don't know. I like the challenge. 
<laughs> that's super cool. And I would have, yeah, to think about, and then to add in the fact that they are high school students mm. um, who, like, that's a tough age group. It's a tough age group to wrangle. I was a tough yes. rank to be wrangled when I was in high school. That's that's a skill. And we bring in, like, a lot of the time we'll bring in teachers for the adult parts. Um, so the kids get really excited that the teachers are coming in. And then the teacher's like, I have to dance. I'm like, oh, yes. Don't worry. I'll make you look good. Uh, and then, you know, it's a boys' school, so we bring in the girls. And um, sometimes we bring in people that are, you know, doing this as a living, uh, depending on age group and parts and all of that. So it's a cool mix. And they see the people that are professional and they get inspired because they know that they can't just goof around. They're like, they want to impress. Um, but yeah, it's great. I, I love it. And I've, I've gotten to, I choreographed, awesome. um, a show for Smile Theater as well. So it's nice, uh, it was nice, uh, to do, to do that too, out in a different environment. Um, and I, I do want to get into That's that That's the company more. that goes into, oh, sorry, I didn't interrupt, interrupt you. No. That's the company that goes into, um, retirement homes, right? You were saying? Yes. They perform for senior citizens, uh, we do professional theater for senior citizens and they are, it's an incredible, incredible, incredible company. Uh, and it's, you know, such a shame oh. that so much has been crazy with COVID and they weren't able to go in, but they've made it work. They've done like online serenades and now they're back out at doing summer serenades and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's a wonderful, wonderful group of people. That's so cool. I want to chat about love loss. Yeah. And our production of Love Loss. And it kind of ties in. Yeah, wifey. wifey. We got married in the show. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spoiler. Because it, it's interesting because it kind of ties into what you're saying about working with people of diff- all abilities, right? Mm-hmm. So you, out of the five of us, are the only, prof- we're the only professional, right? I shouldn't do air quotes. It's not air quoting professional. You are a professional <laughs> actor, right? Yes. The rest of us are, you know, amazing teacher, doctor, right? You know, like, so I think there was, and it was not, it was not pressure put on any of us because it didn't come from anywhere. But I remember being like, oh my God, Stephanie's like legit. (laughs) Like, get your act together, Janet, because... This is legit. And it, and again, it's not like there was any pressure put on us by anyone, but I was like, okay, like, this is somebody who does this, you know, step up, <laughs> step up. Um, but yeah, tell me, like, how did you learn about the audition for Mariposa Arts Theatre? Like, how did that come about? So my in-laws work for Matt a lot and they do um, stage management or, or props and set deck and all that. Um, so my mother-in-law messaged me and was like, oh, look at this audition. They're looking for a Stephanie, because that was one of the characters' names. And I was like, oh. And then I, I looked into the show and I was like, wow, like, this looks really awesome. I loved that it was kind of a mix of short scenes and monologues, that it was all female. It was, like, material I knew I could use later down the line, like, four monologues when auditioning and I really really wanted to get involved with the community here because I'm still feel like I'm pretty new to Aurelia and uh, I did a show way back at the Opera House and I'm die I was dying to do another show there um and it's you know a stone's throw from my house now so but you know you had to go I have to go around and like I had to get permission from Equity to do the show and I had to talk to my agent and you know fight for my case and I said well I think it's going to be really good um, because it's a new community for me it gets me put out there I get to connect with people and you know all that kind of stuff so um, it was all a go and I am so glad that I did it um, I was really like pumped to do it really pumped so it was a long <laughs> process as you're aware kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and then was happening in a really crazy time for me but um yeah I you know and 
Zoom rehearsals, like, wow, let's hope we never have to do that again. But we made it work. Agreed. We made it work, and that's how I heard about it. That's why I really wanted to do it was to connect with my community, and I, I loved the piece. And, yeah, I think we did an awesome job. I think we crushed <laughs> it. <laughs> it was so lovely uh, sharing the stage with you. Aww. I will never forget the look on your face when I forgot my lines and you were about to jump in and then I remembered them. But I remember just the look on your face was just like, you freaking got this. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like you were holding my hand with your eyes. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And it's funny because I... <laughs> I hope that level of fear is never in my eyes ever again, but I look at your face a lot when we do improv together because there's this this trust that I'll always have with you and you know improv is all about trust and you know again what spoiler we're in an improv troupe together <laughs> now um but woo but there's there's that level that I think came from the insanity that was that play, the rehearsal process, um, you know, connecting really quickly with you as an actor, but also you as like a human and really, really. And I remember our little, like, I want to be friends with you. Our little side chats on Zoom being like, oh, that was so good. Like, da, 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 da. <laughs> you were so good at that. <laughs> but I think, like, there's something about trust that I didn't really understand. And I think as an actor, until I kind of got in the position of needing to trust people, um, where I wonder in theater school that like, is that is that a ta is that a learned thing? Like you have to trust your fellow people on stage. Like how as people who are second act actors who struggle with that, do you have any advice? Um, yeah, it, trusting is huge. And yeah. I, I don't like you're t you're told to to trust your fellow um, actors and you know I tell kids all the time look if if someone doesn't know their line and you know the line like make it happen help them out put it into your character's voice instead of theirs or ask them the question like oh did you find that were, were, what were you looking for again you know give them a prompt that puts them back on track because I can't stand people leaving others hanging out to dry. Right. Um, yeah, I guess my advice would just be, you know, know your script inside and out um, because it's it's good for you and it's good to be a support system for your fellow actors. Like there's always a way you can make something work. And if it's improv, uh, just be there and be open and be ready to jump in with something ridiculous or something of your own if that person is like uh, which I often do um, <laughs> jump in and, and be there but yeah you it's also you know acting is a huge vulnerability thing learning to be vulnerable and letting mm -hmm. letting people in while being vulnerable is something that it takes time to learn and then trusting them to have your back to take your hand to you know uh it's a process and the more you work with certain people the obviously you gain that with them or if you have a moment like that moment i didn't realize that that was like such an impactful thing for you um but i'm glad that it was in a positive <laughs> way and now we have that right mm -hmm. so yeah yeah it's just you have to trust and if you don't trust your fellow actors there's the play is not gonna yeah, it will read from the audience you know, like we, at someone watching mm -hmm. it, you'll be able to tell like, oh, they don't really have a great connection. And you don't, you know, not all characters mm -hmm. have to connect like this, but um, it's, it's interesting because often when I'll watch something and I'll talk to someone after, I'll be like, oh, did, did the rehearsal process, like did that? And they're like, oh yeah, disaster. Or, you know, or I'll be like, wow, these two had a really good connection. Oh, yep, they've been working on their stuff. Like, since day one, they've been, like, taking their own time. And you can tell. Like, you, you can tell the work and the trust that goes into things. Mm. 
It's interesting because I, I, I know I chat with people who've been through theater school a lot about this. And it was actually um, like Stacy and I who were talking about it. Um, the idea that in theater school, they're really teaching you that, that emotional vulnerability and to be able and to be able to express it openly so that the public can see the emotions on your face, in your body, in your words, right? Where in medical school, we're taught the opposite. Mm. It's, you know, you feel in your body the emotions, but you should not be expressing it on your face because you don't want to impart that you're sca- exactly that you're scared um, to your patient. It's kind of like the flight attendant, like flight attendants as well, too, right? Like I remember being told the only time you should worry when you're on the plane is when the flight attendant looks scared, right? Because oh, you're God, taught like terrifying. Mm-hmm calm you want to be the calmest right you, i know right but same with like surgery right like you know like you know this you don't want your surgeon to be like oh my god <laughs> right they want to be you know calm calmest person in the room right so it's been a difficult thing for me to learn how to for example show i am sad now the world can see i'm sad because i'm like i'm feeling it i'm seeing it and then the people watching are like, yeah, your face is literally, you just, you're like this. I'm like, but I'm feeling it. But my face, like, it's it's that emotional restraint right. that I know I've been struggling with. So it's like the flip opposite of, like, theater school, medical school, and I'm sure, like, other professional schools. You know, like, how to dig into that vulnerability, but also be able to express a public emotion, uh, sorry, express private emotions publicly. Right. Um, do you have any thoughts on that or advice? I guess my thought on that would be, um, you know, in school, yes, they want to teach you that, but they don't openly be like, now we're going to do a class about vulnerability. You know, it's it's through huh. all these other classes. Like, we had all these movement classes where it's like, okay, pick a vowel. Now, like, hum on this vowel and, like, move your body around the room. And so it was, like, very you know, very like theater exercises, which, you know, I loved because I've always been, I've always worn my heart on my sleeve. I'm an emotional person. I know that. Um, But it's also, that's also been a challenge because sometimes like I really have to, I really have to watch what I channel when I'm acting because you don't want to get so caught up that, that you lose the plot. And a lot of the time, it's mm. more interesting to watch someone that's about to cry than someone that's crying. Um, right. But it's also, we also have that as actors, what you were saying, too. Like, the you know, if you're the fear of doing your first <laughs> operation or something, you know, people get really afraid. And that's the saying, like, fake it till you make it, baby. You know, it's like, okay, <laughs> put your pants, put your big girl pants on and let's... Uh, Let's pretend like you know exactly what you're doing and go out on that stage with full gusto because inside we're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Right. So that happens, too. It still happens in in the acting industry. But, yes, we are encouraged to to emote and and to let ourselves go there. And I think, you know, also you as Janet have such a sunny disposition that Mm. and you have this beautiful smile (laughs) That I can see, totally understand you being like, I'm feeling it, but you like look like this. <laughs> sad. You know, I'm sad. <laughs> um, but it also is, you know, it's such a good release feeling too when you, and I think again, mm. that comes back to trust, you know, and when you trust your, your a- fellow actors on stage, then you start, and you had moments where you totally let go. You you one hundred percent had that, mm-hmm. and I, it's was further in like when you started to trust what you were doing and the people around you, and like doesn't it feel good when you can just oh, fully drop yeah. into a moment and just be present in that moment with all the things mm-hmm. going on in everybody's life and and all the white noise and you know it's like in meditation when they're like and just stop thinking about anything I'm like okay like <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> So when you have that like beautiful acting moment and you can just be in that moment as your character and just drop in, it's it's like so rewarding. Don't you think? Yeah, it's an addiction. Yeah. It yeah. feels so good 
And then you're like, give me that back, please. Yeah. <laughs> it felt so good. But you can't force it. Yeah. Because then if you yeah. try and force it the next time and it's ingenuine, it just it's, does not work. Right? So it's it's just yeah. letting yourself go yeah. there and feeling... It's, it's a combination of trusting yourself and trusting the people around you and knowing that the audience is there for the show in the context of the show and that it's okay to to go there whether it's like extreme rage or sadness or a psychotic episode like who knows you know or tantrum like they're there for that they're there to support you and you you have to trust your own work um to just be that person and not be you in that moment Do you have any memorable or funny on stage <laughs> stories? Yes. <laughs> um, this one, this one Yay. is did well. I was there, but this one um, will haunt my best friend for the rest of her life. And I'm going to tell this story, and I hope she's okay with it. But uh, we were doing a production of Spring Awakening. And there's the scene where... Uh, do you know that show? Ish. Ish. Okay, so the show is all about, like, yeah. teenage angst. Anything you can think about, it's, like, full of yes. everything inappropriate, everything that teenagers go through. Um, it's, oh, an amazing show. And it's... Um, a period show but then they break out into these songs and the songs are like how they're feeling in their head and it's like almost like they're in another world with the songs and then it goes back to their structured lives so it was a number called I Believe and those that know the show will know this number and they're basically having sex on stage the cast is, like, all around the two main characters singing this beautiful, like, song. And we're really there for them in that moment. Which was, you know, that's another great example of trusting people around you on stage. Um, and the guy playing the lead got a massive nosebleed. And they were, like, making out. <laughs> and we're singing. We're like, I believe, I believe. Oh my god! Like he was just gushing blood onto this girl playing Vendla, and um, <laughs> you couldn't really see from the audience, but we could all see because we were right around them. And my first thought was like, "Don't get it on the costume. Don't get blood on the costume. Don't get blood on the costume." Yeah. <laughs> so then intermission hits, and he's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And she's like, "Oh." She's like, I was just, like, swallowing your blood. She's like, that is disgusting. And they were, like, running down the hall. He's, like, dripping blood down the hall. I'm like, don't get it on the costume. I'm like, cold water, cold water. <laughs> so that was, like, a story that I will never forget. And I'm glad it didn't happen to me. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Holy That's one that comes to there mind. Is n there's nothing... More incredible. So I always I ask this question to everybody, and the people I get the craziest responses from are the people who do live theater because there's yes. just nothing like it. It's so unpredictable. It's just such a gong show, yeah. and it's like, okay, like the show must go on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. There's I like so it. many things like that, and you know, when you put like little kids in the show. You know, it's like, oh, you, why were you late for your entrance? Like, I could not find the kid. Like, they were not where they were supposed to be backstage. They were running around. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I couldn't find the kid. Uh, it's just, like, crazy. And then, you know, in that, actually, in the same show, I forgot one one time to do a preset. Oh, so bad, I know. And I was supposed to hand off this, like, piece of woodruff to the girl playing Fendula, who was the lead. And... <laughs> She just, like, I had to not break character, but I had to tell her that I didn't have it because she, like, was coming to me to get it for the scene. And I was just, like, this and, like, walked away off stage. She's, like, I'm not dying. You forgot my wardrobe. 
And it's just another thing we just joke about. It's like things happen, you know, things get crazy, things happen, yeah. people forget presets or they forget to move something and you got to just accommodate. It's just like helping someone out with a line. It's like, oh gosh, someone dropped like a pearl necklace on stage that split. Okay, how am I going to pick up these pearls that I can see? And, you know, you just, you make it work. And there's a lot of people yeah. that actually don't have that instinct and they'll walk past it like five times and sitting in the audience, you're like, pick it up. <laughs> like you, <you're, laughs> like, make a reason. So, but then you always have the people that come along and I'm like, oh, thank you. Like, thank God for you. Um, but yeah, you know, stuff happens all the time. I'm sure I have a million stories. Well, and I wonder about your background in improv and just like now doing improv as well right like I think is if you get stuck in and I'm guilty of this like logical brain needs to know where everything is at all times like you should see the spreadsheet I have for all my presets for this one act play that I'm doing right like I need to know where everything is all my blocking blah 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 but what has been so helpful is improv and just releasing that and being like calm down Use your instincts mm. and just go with the flow because the unpredictable will happen. Um, yeah. Like, do you have any advice for people like that who are just very stuck in like everything needs to be this way? And if it doesn't go that way, it's panic. Yeah. Well, first of all, my experience in improv doesn't really exist. <laughs> like I did a couple classes in school. That was it. So it's very new to me. Um, That's more than... <laughs> Lots of people. <laughs> it's very new and very terrifying and very fun all at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, like I often, I write out um, on a giant cue card, I write out uh, each scene, like where I enter and exit from and and what I bring on. And then on the back, I have a list of all my presets. Because when, no matter how well you know the show... When you're running around and doing a million things at once and you have your, your everyday life to accommodate for as well, it's I need to have something that I can just look at that's already been thought through and I can go, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Good. Okay, good. Everything's ready to go. And, you know, usually for the first, like, for the week of dress rehearsals, I keep that, like, right on my person. And then as I start to feel fine, I just kind of let it go. But... People that are that have to have everything perfect, theater's probably not for them. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you have to be able, you have to be able to laugh at yourself and to let things go. You know, like you have to go with the flow, and that's a huge thing of theater. Like, you have to be able to just be like, oh, this person skipped five lines. Cool, let's keep going. You know, because everything can happen. You could be the person that jumped the queue. Someone else could jump the queue. Maybe it means that you don't end up bringing that weird dress on from stage right like who knows right um but you ha you just have to be able to go with the flow and again goes back to knowing your script inside out knowing your cues knowing what they're gonna say how you can rework the situation if they missed a line that was like crucial to the plot you got to get it back in there you know um but yeah you have to let it go at a certain stage you can be a perfectionist i i get it i am that way you can do that all through rehearsal process, but you have to trust your own work at the end of the day. That's my advice. You've got to trust your own work. You've put in the time, you know your script, you know your character, you know what you're doing. So stop thinking about it because it will just come to you and just be and just perform. You, you have to trust your, the work. It's great advice. <laughs> trust the work. I love it. <laughs> Trust my work. Yes. <laughs> Put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, you know it. You know it. You know, and there's nothing more frustrating than watching someone that knows it second guess themselves, right? It's like, oh, and yeah. I've been there too. I've been that person second guessing myself. But no, it's like, you know it. Trust your instincts. Do what you feel is right because that's what's most true to you. You know, sometimes the, the best yeah. person to watch on stage is the person that has no theater experience because everything they do is so genuine. Hmm. You know, people that are coming into it that That's are new lovely. and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, but you are so lovely to watch because you are just there. You're present. You're in the moment. Hmm. You, you're you there, you know, and everybody else is like, actor brain, like, like overthinking everything. And 
So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's it's almost like, yeah, you can almost over-educate yourself. And it's overwhelming, I think. I know especially someone who's like, I've been starting to take acting classes and stuff, and there's a million different ways to act. And, you know, which way is the right way? Is there a right way, right? It's just, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of a lot of theories and this way is the best way, that way is the best way. And sometimes I just think, oh my gosh, there's just too much going on. Just go back to the basics and yeah. just listen to the person who's sitting across from you. Yeah. Which is so simple, but so tricky. And 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 say your text to someone that means something to you. So it's not just words in the air, you know, channeling. Mm. And, I, you know, what? it's funny because I say this I say this to Claudine all the time, but Claudine, who is in our show, her like boots monologue, for example, I have never seen someone so natural and so, you know, like everyone was wonderful and everybody had extremely amazing moments. But that monologue for me and her instinct of just saying like it was stunning. And she and, and she's someone that doesn't have that confidence in herself. And I'm like, but you are so good. Like that is, yeah. I would watch that yeah. over and over and over and over, you know? So people, sometimes yeah. people don't yeah. know, but again, like mm-hmm. there's someone that's not used to being on stage all the time and watching them is so cool because it's just so genuine. It's so real. So honest. Shout out to Claudine. <laughs> Great. Claudine. We love you, Claude. <laughs> I got like goosebumps just thinking about her boots monologue. I know. Like that, yeah. And I was thinking about I was thinking about some of the some of the mono, some of the stuff that like well like you're saying everybody was so great in that show, but like some of the like, there were a couple lines that Laurel said that I that's the reason I had to have Kleenex in my <laughs> pockets because I was like she's gonna make me cry like yeah. like oh god yeah. yeah yeah is there anything you are looking forward to this year oh gosh I honestly. Like, I can barely think ahead day to day right now. <laughs> it's like everything is so, there's so much happening and so much like, oh, we're going to do this show in the fall. We're going to do this. And I get all these calls, but I'm like, okay, but I get to, I get the summer first, right? Like I get the summer. So um, my husband and I are going away on a trip out east. So I'm really excited for that. Um, and I'm really pumped for all our improv shows that we have coming up. That's really mm-hmm. exciting to do throughout the summer. And, uh, you know, yeah, I've got, I've got projects and, and stuff coming up. I've got some more record dates for cartoons and commercials and things like that. So I'm really excited for that. But, you know, I'm also just excited for life and for it to be summer and warm and nice weather. And I get, can't wait to swim in the lake and go out east and eat lobster. And, you know, <laughs> there's so much more to life than performing as well, right? Like... I understand that that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about here, but, you know, don't get me wrong. There's there's so much more, and people that get hung up in everything is performance-related. Like, some of my friends would ask me that question, what are you excited for? And I'd be like, well, I'm getting married. They're like, no, 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 I mean in theater. I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, that's not my whole life, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm excited for, for what the summer brings, and to hang out with you more and to see your show. I'm very excited to see your show. Oh, that I've I'm been in- so excited for you to instructed to it. leave a surprise as to when I'm coming. <laughs> well, it was more just, Claudine was like, do you want us to tell you when you're coming or do you want it to be a surprise? I'm like, surprises are fun. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, wifey, for being my guest this week. Yes, yeah, spoiler, we got married in the show, so wifey. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed these four episodes, this incredible Love, Loss, and What I Wore week. That show was really key for me. It really ignited, reignited, I should say, the creative flame that we all have, that I have, of course, that had burnt out for sure, for sure. Being back up on that stage really made me realize how much I love performing, how much I love being on stage with other human beings. And again, relit that creative flame that had 100% gone out. So 
Uh, I appreciate you all, you lovely four women. I appreciate the friendships we've developed, the friendships we continue and maintain. And thank you to Mariposa Arts Theatre for bringing the five of us together. It was an incredible production and uh, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Thank you again for tuning in, and I hope you'll join me ne- next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Oh, now I'm getting emotional again. Okay, bye. Second Act Actors is produced and edited by me, Janet McMorty. Theme music by Guillaume. Additional sound editing by David Studio. Additional video editing by Jackie Wadewer. Show notes written by Sarah Hopkinson. I record using Riverside FM. If you're interested in developing an interview-based webcast like mine, I highly recommend this platform. Shoot me an email and I'll direct you to the wonderful folks there. If you or someone you know is interested in being a guest, email me at secondactactors at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. My love language is words of affirmation, so compliments, constructive criticism, and feedback are always welcome and encouraged. Negative Nancys, Judgy McJudgersons, or Debbie Downers, unless you're Rachel Dratch, regarding me or my guests are not welcome. It takes serious courage to share your story with the world, so if you're tempted to negatively comment about someone else's story, please ask your therapist why you're such a garbage person. Save the drama for the stage. On that happy note, I hope you'll tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye! Bye!